Hi, my name is Rainer Joswig and I'm going to show you to how to write some Lisp code. And there was a recent um, talk about um, an article which you see here. Um, there was a posting on Complank Lisp and uh, this article talks about domain-specific languages. Um, he gives an example um, with some sample data here we want to parse and um, so there's lots of uh, C-sharp code here and um, there is a XML file for configuration so this is the usual style you see now people writing code and then have um, configuration files or domain specific languages which kind of are configuration files and um, they're using XML. So here's a, another one, uh, another format which looks a little bit better than XML. And um, so he mentions Lisp somewhere in his article, but since he doesn't give any example, um, I think uh, we should have one. He actually even has a Java example here, but you better not look at it. Um, it's not really pretty. So let's try to get our version. So we have this data here. Go into ListWorks, have a variable, example data, pasting it in, compiled it. So going to the listener and then you see so we have set this data here. Um, now let's look at the configuration here. So we don't take the XML code because it's too ugly. We take this one here. Um, so well we lispify it just by, by typing now. You could actually um, write some code to do it for you. But since uh, the example is only small, let's do it by hand. Death parameter mappings. So just to have an idea how it should look like. So this is a string. Um, Actually, the one that drives the mapping is this one. So then we have the start and end position and the name of the field. Oh, it's a little bit boring, but it's the fastest right now to type that by hand we are going to lispify the names a little bit so it doesn't look too foreign to a lisp user the idea is that you maintain this stuff in lisp anyway so we want to have a format which a little bit looks like lisp and uh, uses list naming so stuff you want to look up later um, you use symbols for so symbols have a nice property that when you read code this code this data and these symbols are interned so um, if you, you would use strings every string would um, take up memory so the symbol is just a reference to a symbol in some package probably. So let's change the naming here customer name read date so make it lowercase meta l oops uppercase so this is 
or lowercase. So now we have our mapping. Um, what's a class? Dev class. So let's write a class for the service call. We have no super class, but we have a few slots. Customer name, customer ID. So let's compile it. So now we have a class. Find class. Um, service call, so you see that's the class. Um, so, how we parse a line, um, like um, this one here, parse line, so we're using this class. Okay, let's write a method, dev method, pass line, actually I will rename it, pass line for class, it takes a line and we dispatch on the class symbol equal Call. So what we do is um, we loop over the slots, over the fields, loop for start, end, slot, in, and then we would take data structure here do set f slot value object slot and what's the new value subseq of the line start and so where do we get this object from object we make an instance of the class we get as parameter and we will return the object so let's indent control meta Q. So you see now this is the code. Actually, you see stuff is hardwired here, but in Lisp it's not really hardwired anyway because you can update all this method uh, later at will. So we don't look it up, it's just hardwired in the method. Um, so now you should be able to run this example. I was compiling this function here, this method. Let's try it here. So we have a service call, describe. Um, so now we see these are the fields. Uh, you could inspect it and uh, you get an inspector window. So, but describe is good for for us so we have um, a class and the method for parsing a service call line we want to pass uh, the other stuff also but instead of writing the code now we let this generate the code for us um, that's where we introduce a macro the macro takes a name type and the body is the description of the mapping 
and um, we are going to generate this class first. Uh, so, where do we get the class name from? So it's just the name. Where do we get these slots from? Um, loop for... So now we take the description, we're doing some destructuring. Not interested in these values, but we're interested in the slot. In. Description collect slot. So we are getting a list of slots. And now we need to generate um, this method indent. So the class comes in here. So it's the name. This um, this description comes in here. And um, probably um, that's it to generate this. Um, uh, the method and the class. Let's compile it. So type is bound but not reference, so we haven't used it yet. So let's check the code generation. We, we're doing a pretty print on the macro expanded um, usage of our def mapping. So def mapping would be this one but this way and death mapping would be this one So let's take this form here and expand it. Um, so you see there's an error. The loop is expanded into the stuff. So we are executing the loop about um, bum, bum, bum. So change it and try the expansion again. So now we're talking. So we have the um, dev class here, which uh, generates the service call and the slots. And this is our method, two parameters. And um, we are generating this object here and then iterate over the field descriptions. So control shift C compiles it and we should be able to use this example here describe and you see it's passed by it. Um, Let's do a second example. So we're using this usage string here. And the type is usage.
Uh, so you see there is no applicable method. Top. Let's compile it. Try it again. And you see we now have a past object. Describe it. And you see it has some stuff parsed here. So how we do the whole parsing of um, the example data with input from string. So it's always a good idea to get a stream, to read from a string. Example data loop for line stream no error nil returned while line collect so now we have this example call here let's get rid of this one this is the line actually service call we have to extract find class for parser and um, we are using subseek to extract the um, type 904 and we're doing an intern so this function here is still missing missing so we are generating another method dev method find class for parser it takes um, dispatches on the type and the type is equal to intern type and we are returning the class name compile it's compiled and uh, let's check the code generation again so now you see this one is new there's a type parameter dispatches on this one and returns a service call symbol so let's generate the code you see it generates a class a method and another method so let's try this one here it returns uh, four objects as expected since our input is uh, four lines let's uh, describe the first one and you see you get objects pre-parsed and our code is working so we can get rid of a little bit of this code here the data is no longer needed the class is no longer needed because it's generated the method is no longer needed because it's generated so getting rid of this stuff and getting rid of this stuff and this is now our code here's the uh, input data here's the code generation macro here's an uh, example mapping with our little macro and this is the example we can try out thanks for listening